Than and announced. And LSU is the number one <laughs> overall team in the country. To the delight of the man to my right. LSU will face number four, Oklahoma, in the first semifinals on December 28th, the Chick fil A Peach Bowl. It's LSU's first playoff appearance. They open as a double digit favorite. The nightcap will be number two, Ohio State, and number three, Clemson, mm. in the Ooh. PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. The Buckeyes are 0 3 all time against Clemson, including a 31 0 loss in the semis. The Buckeyes do, however, own the best FPI chance to win it all at 35%. LSU is second at 28%, despite its top seed and favorable matchup in the first semifinal. So, let's get into a conversation here. I've got the two of you, for those of you who don't know, from the SEC Network, Laura and Marcus, you cover them all year long. Did the committee get it right? Did LSU deserve to be number one? They absolutely got it right, and I think this is maybe the first time that there's such a large collection of people that feel like this is the mm -hmm. best ranking that we've seen from the committee in that final week. So, absolutely, with the win over Georgia, and say what you want about what Georgia's offense looks like, they're a top three defense in the country. For LSU to win that game and the respect the committee had on them, they had to move them up to number uh, one. Listen, you are obviously hopelessly biased, but the reality is it went back and forth and back and forth with Ohio yep. State for, throughout the entirety of this season. Ohio State was number one last week, and they didn't lose. But you still think they got it right? Yeah, look, the committee couldn't rest on their laurels. When they when they flipped this, it was because of defense. Holistically, they said, look, this team is better on both sides of the ball. You flip back. LSU shed out Texas A&M, and then they a week later shed out Georgia. So if you were going to make that argument for Ohio State three weeks ago, you had to make that one for LSU this past week. And then – we watched Ohio State go down 21-7 against Wisconsin, which I think played a big part when yes. you couple those three teams and say, okay, guys, this is where we are this week. I think the committee got it right. Pat okay, McAfee, I want, I want you to comment specifically on yeah. something that you saw. You were at the game in Georgia, in Atlanta, yeah. and you saw Joe Burrow in person for the first time, and you came away with some very strong opinions. He's going to make all the monies. I, I honestly believe the thing that impressed me most was before the game, before the warm-up, there's a little session where players are out there like in tight shirts and shorts thrown around. They had this close-up on his face. He was the most calm, cool, collected guy on the field. He doesn't seem to be rattled. In his first year as a big-time real starter for a program, he has done it all, been there, done that. Then with his feet, his arm, every play he makes – points directly to the fact that he's going to be an incredible NFL quarterback. And you could say this about other college quarterbacks in the past, and it has been said. But with this guy, the, the story that Coach Old told about his phone breaking – and instead of getting a new phone, he said, I don't need a phone right now. I'm focused on football. This guy's an Ohio guy, so he's got grit. He loves football. He's calm, cool, and collected. And he's an athlete that can make every throw. I think not only is he going to make a run here for the college football playoff, but in the future, we're going to be talking about a guy who's going to earn hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars sure for a quarterback. Is. Dan Orlovsky, you do games all year long. You've seen all of these teams. I think we all think they got the rankings right. That doesn't mean LSU's the best team. It means they earned being number one. And your opinion, which is the best team? Clemson. I'm taking Clemson to win the whole thing. I, I think that Clemson's got this defense that not enough people are talking about. They lost all those first-rounders. Everything that was on that defensive line has gone to their back seven. 28-game win streak in a row. Their quarterback, listen, Joe Burrow's been amazing. He's great. Heisman Trophy winner. Quarterback Trevor Lawrence is playing just as good as Joe Burrow. He can make throws. Like into tight windows where Matthew Stafford was like this, where Matthew Stafford would start to make some throws. I'd be like, don't do that. And then I'd be like, oh, that's why you did that. Because you, only you can make those throws. Trevor Lawrence can make throws that no one else in the college football playoff quarterback-wise can. Travis Etienne is the oh, toughest bro. back in the country to tackle. So I'm taking Clemson. Here's the reality, though, Marcus. There were actually three number one seeds here. We're splitting yeah. hairs for the committee. In your mind, why are you not as sold on Clemson? Because you told us this earlier. Look, first of all, who has Clemson played? No Let's one. be honest. Like, we got to stop having this conversation like we know what Clemson is going to look like against Ohio State. They hadn't played anybody remotely close to what Ohio State is. And then when you look at LSU, you guys, I've sat with you for a long time. Look, they say when you take the quarterback, that's the best one, you got the best chance to win. I would argue anybody. I, I'm a firm believer in Trevor Lawrence. I had to see it last year. Very I think good. a lot of people remember the national championship, what he did. Joe Burrow's the best quarterback in college. It, it's not even close. Well, what you're going to see is this year's number one pick and next year's number one pick <laughs> in the college football playoff. Meanwhile, that guy wasn't the number one pick, but he's awfully good. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers struggling to beat Washington yesterday. They're 10-3, and three, but just how good are they? We get to that and more as we continue you next get up on ESPN here in the wind Pat McAfee your thoughts fourth down guy tries to rip his face off the Iowa Hawkeye said uh-uh 
picked up another 20, plus 15 on top of that. Here you go, Robbie Gold. Let's get a win down in the bayou in the Superdome. That, that genuinely is the kind of play that I have to believe energizes everyone. Oh, hell yeah. It, that, that is the play of the year in the NFL season so far. Next stop, Baltimore. Lamar Jackson threw three, went over a thousand yards rushing. Swagoo, Ravens, are they the best team in the sport? Best team in the sport, and it's complete. But leave your ankles with me, cuz. I'll take them to the store for you. And when you look at the other side of the ball, they are rushing the pass of six sacks. Look at look at these picks that Ozzy left them with. Ozzy, wherever you are, thank you, sir, for bringing these guys into this organization. Ravens can beat you any way you want to play them. A statement went over Buffalo Meet yesterday. Me in the streets. And then Rex to New England, where the Patriots offense stalled. Again, we talked a lot about the officiating, but at the end of the day, what does this Patriots offense look like to you? A bad, an awful offense, yeah. really. They got nothing, man. They got no offensive line. They can't run the ball, nothing. Please, I'd love to have played this team. And I'm not just saying it. I would have loved to have played this team. All right, let, let's bring it out here. Let's just take a minute on this because we opened our show with this game and we talked a lot about the officiating and I make no apologies for it because that was a huge part of the storyline. But the reality is the Patriots look unprecedentedly vulnerable because their offense just looks terrible. Between now and the second week in January, can they figure something out that works? No, G, because it's a personnel issue. They can figure it out from a coaching standpoint. We're talking about the best they ever do it. But when you look at personnel, that is what is causing us to have this reaction to the Patriots. If you don't have at least one guy, we talked about we talked about this team. We, we talked about it all year. When they got AB, we was like, okay, that changes everything. They let Josh Gordon go. Josh Gordon made a lot of plays for Seattle last night against the Rams. When you look at the personnel, it's the issue. Tom Brady being able to lift this team to better than what their personnel was, he can't do it anymore. It's a part of the problem as well. Listen, I made lifelong fan of the New York Jets. I root against the Patriots every time they play. And I wanted to throw something at the television watching Jacoby Myers drop passes mm -hmm. yesterday. Right. I mean, they, you just can't win with that. No, we know how that looks being a Jet. Yes, lifer. correct. We've had a couple <laughs> of those usually ourselves. usually us, not them. Right, those exactly. Guys. But I'm going to say this. When you look at New England, one thing they haven't done that I expect them to do is, look, they get no production out of tight end, so don't use a tight end. All right, let's put an offensive lineman in that place. That can probably help in protection. I know it'll help in protection, and it'll probably help in a run game. That's what I expect this team to do. Look, they, they have no weapons outside. They have no tight end. You've got to do something. The best that's ever done it as, as a yep. coach right here might be having his best coaching you know, of, of, of all time, of his entire career. Why? Because there is nobody out there. Yeah, Swagoo said it at the top of the hour there at the beginning. Of the, I don't know how the hell you TV people talk. But it was uh, – he said that any other coaching staff would be 1-11 right yeah, now. Yeah, And I thoroughly point. agree with that because the defense and special teams right now has elevated them no and question. the offense just hasn't been able to pick up. You saw them early go with tempo. You saw trick plays. I think they're trying everything they possibly can to get that offense going. And Bill Belichick has been quoted as saying, real football starts after – Thanksgiving. Well, now we're a couple weeks after Thanksgiving, and it's there's been no... Christmas, yeah, it's almost Christmas. Yeah. Happy holidays, by the way, yeah, to everybody. Uh, happy Happy New Year's coming. Birthday's yeah. next week, by Happy the way. birthday happy to everybody. Break. But yeah. it just we're at a point now where that offense is nowhere near humming, and they had people in the building, and when you get rid of them, you go, oh, Belichick will figure it out. Belichick will figure it out. And we're at the point now where they haven't, and I, I'm going to have to turn on the Patriots someday, and I'm dreading that day, <laughs> because I've been a part of like 50-point losses, but those days seem to be long gone right now for this and then, too, when you look at the other side of the ball, we talk historic defense. That right. was the whole spiel. Well, when you're playing 80 plays a game because your, your offense can't get a first down, Tired you're going to get balls. exposed. I don't care who you are. The dudes on the other side getting paid as well. I can't believe I'm saying this, yeah. but Demarius Thomas would be the best wide receiver outside of God. on that team no right question. now. And they Twice. traded him to the Jets. Josh Gordon would seven, be, too. But they traded him to yeah. the Jets for a seventh-round yeah. pick. Well, yeah. and he was cut and then trade. He yeah. was cut, brought back, then trade. You give it to him. Everybody's like, you know what? Bill Belichick, he's the greatest coach of all time. He'll He'll figure it out. Also, yep. GM. Josh Gordon, IR, back in a couple weeks for Seattle Seahawks. Now, last night he got hot. He hasn't done much. Yeah, they'll figure it out. They haven't figured it out. And obviously, Antonio Brown, with the terrible allegations, they had to get rid of him. But he's on an apology tour. They've had weapons. And Gee, right now, it's just like, they, they look even, bad. They don't offense. even have anybody out there that scares you. Like, as no. a defense, Rex, you know they're going Who's into speed? a game. Who you game planning against? All they're saying is, if we can get the Tom Brady and cover guys, we'll beat this team. No, that's Won't exactly right. Zone. Final thought. Final thought is this team is in trouble. Whoa. I mean, they are in trouble, and I can't wait to see them get beat in the first round. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. There That's you go. That's a lot of built-up anger. No built-up anger. Where was this team? When